Well, hello uh, and welcome uh, a wee donor down to the hospital. Uh, as many of you may know, there's a, a wee virus going about, so I've decided instead of taking people at a walk, I would take you to some of the places that we've been going to and travelling throughout Stonehouse for the last kind of 25, 30 years or so. Uh, some of these places you might never have been before, some of them you may well have done in your, your travels uh, around Stonehouse as a, a wane or maybe even uh, a wee bit older than that. But uh, here, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can find today. But today we're going to the hospital. It's uh, just in the pathway here and uh, we'll see what we can find. And we'll maybe find out a wee bit of history of the place as well. But before we go any further, I'll let me just show you what we've got here. This is just the, the rights away sign and that just lets you know some of the places that you can go in the village uh, quite safely and it tells you a wee bit about information about what's actually there as well. So this is where we're going today. So come and follow me and we'll see what we can find. Now this wee path here as we're going down here, it's actually, uh, it's mock it but uh, you're alright, if you put on good boots you'll be fine. And here we're crossing the stile, this has been put in for your help there just to make sure you get over safely. I'll try and make sure I don't fall in my, my backside but uh, aye, it's definitely one for the wellies so good pair of wellies, get that on and away we go. Now this whole path here, this has been here for uh, hundreds of years. It's still used. Uh, there are sheep down here. There's no cattle, so you're safe enough. Uh, and it's a popular bit for the, the walkers uh, with their dogs or the guys going down here on the fishing. And we'll just see what we can actually see along the path here. Now, this is actually, we're just after the spring equinox. So you may not know this, but uh, in days gone by, folk would actually come down to these places to make. Uh, we offerings uh, down at the water and to uh, make uh, make bits and pieces. <laughs> I'm ever now already. Now, as we're going down here, what have we got here in the trees? Right, there's these wee things here, and there's wee, they're wee tiny lichens. I don't know if you can actually see that, or if it's, that's it's a wee bit slightly out of focus. Anyway, there we go. There's wee lichens that's on the tree. Believe it or not, there must be over 60 to 70 different kinds of lichens around about this area. I do know that if you're ever in uh, St Ninian's graveyard, there's over 60 kinds of lichen there now. You might think, oh, that's great, that's smashing. Well, what waste is that? All these lichens, they actually have got different properties in them. Uh, some of them actually make dyes. So you would uh, fill a bucket full of pee and that would add uh, water to it and uh, you put the lichen into the, the bucket and it would actually work as a fixer uh, for dyeing cloth so some of these uh, lichens can turn the cloth yellow, purple, blacks different colour and that's what they would do in days gone by other thing you might find with some of the lichens is that uh, I'm not sure if this is sea ivy, it might be sea ivy I'm not very good with my lichens but uh, so what they would do in days gone by with this is they would actually crush this up into a very small powder and they would put it in their boots and it would basically act as a talcum powder and that would just protect you if you were going on a, a, long, a long walk uh, anywhere. I'll just need to watch my foot in here because it's very slidey. As we're going down here, this is actually, if you don't know already, just at the below us here, we've got the man spurn, and that follows the pathway all the way down to where we're heading today, down to the hospital, uh, where we'll also see the, the mill home field, which is not too far in the corner. In fact, there's some old maps of the mill home, and... Uh, the Mill Home is a place, I think that dates to at least the 1730s, but may well be uh, a lot older than that. There was an old map, uh, about 1768, and uh, as we get around the corner I'll be able to tell you a wee bit more about it, because uh, the Mill Home used to have a river that cut across uh, the middle of it, and there was a mill in the centre, and that's where it gets its name from, the Mill Home. And this is us just coming up to the turn. A place you can actually 
you might not hear it, but I'm listening to the burn just kind of trickling down the side here, and the birds are cheap, chirping a lot. There's all the, the crows up in the trees there. So there's plenty of life around us. And there he goes, we're coming round the corner there, you can already see the, the Avon, uh, which is uh, now abundant and uh, quite a number of fish now. You've got the, the brown trout, you've got the grayling. And I've recently started to get the, the salmon coming back again. And as we're turning around the corner, here we are, overlooking the mill home, right at the bend. What a view, cracking. And I'll just take a wee quick look down the path, that's the path we're heading down in a wee second. Uh, it's a bonny bit, so if you're ever wanting to come down here, I would suggest you probably better maybe April, May, June time. Uh, when the sun's shining, but that there is uh, the mill home and if you see this big bit of water down here it actually brings me back in mind of the days of the curling where in fact one of the earliest ever curling games in the, the our area uh, took place here uh, between Stonehouse and Glassford uh, and it's actually recorded, now we must be going back several hundred years because it was a time of witchcraft and uh, all the, the goings on that were uh, associated with it but it was said that one day Stonehouse was playing Glassford here and we must have won the last match because if you ever played at curling you would always play it your bit until the next curling game and uh, Glassford came down here to play us hoping to win and they were actually leading the match now, this must be several hundred years ago because what happened is an old fella for the village who was known to be said to be a warlock in fact uh, came down here was watching the game and Stonehouse was getting well beat by Glassford and what happened is he bent down onto the ice and he opened up a small tin and the tin's folk for Glassford were watching this old boy and uh, they thought what's he doing here and all of a sudden all these wee white imps ran onto the ice and the folks for Glassford they took to the hills up to Hunter Lees which is just up there, there. that's my big finger there uh, up the hill and away and of course, because they left the ice, Stonehouse retained the day, and uh, the game was abandoned, and uh, they would have to play again. So that was uh, the story of the warlock there. So let's go down onto the mill home, and we'll see what we can see down there as we head to the, the horse pool. Now, that's me just come down the pathway there, as you see, when you get to the bottom, it's muddy as anything, as I say. It's a good day to dig out your wellies. Uh, if you are coming down here in the, the wetter weather, you're probably better as you come down the, the path there, cut just along this edge here. It's not dry, but you're not get a bit of getting as mock it as you would otherwise. We can get a great view for here. There we go, looking over towards uh, the home farm. And if you can just, just through the trees there, centre, we've got the home farm. And then as we look around, we're coming, looking up the, the brae there, uh, and that takes you up to Hunter Lees. Uh, in fact, that's a good bit for finding uh, old bottles buried in the, the ground there, where uh, in days gone by they used it as a dump, but now you can find some old bottles, maybe going back 100 years ago. And that's us looking over the mill home. Now, where we are here, I'm just going to use my big finger pointer here, there used to be a, 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 a cut here which went right across, somewhere in the middle here was the mill home, uh, uh, an old mill and if we look over here as well, right in that corner over there there also used to be a mill uh, at that point as well so what we're going to do, we're going to just cross over this uh, area here uh, trying to avoid the big uh, muddy bits there, which is almost impossible, so I think I'll just uh, get wet. There we go. Aye, straight in, you dancer. Uh, we'll take a wee donner up this way. And uh, There's obviously been a path here at one time. This is well worn away. In fact, there's a sun coming out for us as well. Brilliant. Uh, and uh, when we walk up to the end here, you'll get a grand view. This is a cracking walk, as I say, the You'll see people, and what they'll do is they'll actually just come, as I'm coming here, along the, the edge, and they'll just get around the circumference of this field, and then back up the brae. And like me today, I'll be bringing my piece down, as many other folks do, and uh, I'll just have a wee picnic. 
when we get to the horse pool I'll tell you a wee story or two and uh, I think today I'll be lucky if I meet anybody at all but sometimes uh, the silence can be a good thing it's certainly good for the mind as well so if you're getting all cooked up and stuck uh, in the house and wondering what to do and want to get some fresh air this is a lovely bit to be and if you're worried about meeting MD your chances of meeting MD are, are pretty slim you might meet the odd sheep whoever who's a wee bit curious <laughs> and also a wee bit tasty there's a, a good wee bit as well, if you are coming down here and you're wondering where to go for your lunch, there's a few places Another bit I'd recommend is, as we're coming round here, heading towards that sheep at the end there Is there's actually a pathway, just goes up the edge of here All the way to the top, and right at the top there's a lovely wee spot where you can sit and have your lunch Overlooking the, the mill home, I've done it once or twice, we're not going the other day but if you get the chance, that's where to head after. And I'll just come off the, the path here a wee bit, just to show you something else uh, which we can see distant wise. Uh, just heading into the middle of the field a bit. Uh, right at the top of the, the hill there, you'll see a wee dark clump of trees. I'll just get the old finger out there, just pointing there. That's where the Glassford standing stones are. There's three standing stones, which are said to be prehistoric, although there's questions about that But one of them has got a cup mark on it uh, And may well date to around about 2000-3000 BC But uh, there's questions as to whether or not they were actually <laughs> much more recent However, there are also the graves of, I think it's four dogs up there, I can't even remember all the names But uh, the Struthers family buried their dogs up there And we'll maybe take a donor up there another walk, but that's where the Glassford Stones are and there is a path that leads you all the way up there and if you fancy it there I get, there a ball there and that looks like quite a good ball uh, my football skills are not too good these days but uh, here we go I'll probably blitter that sheep into the water a bit I'm not sure I'm doing anyway and as I said earlier just if you want to go be down or up the hill, that's where you go, up there, and you'll get a good view of uh, East Main's Farm, West Main's Farm as well. Now just before I uh, put it off and down or up to the horse pool a wee bit, just one other thing to show you. We're back to the Avon again. Now, at this point, I've only found it once, uh, and it was about 20 years ago, I found the foundations of what looks like another mill uh, in this point. Now whether or not this has been, this channel has been taken away to uh, help that mill uh, turn a wheel there, I don't know, it may well just be natural. But it's again a lovely wee spot and let's uh, travel on and we'll get some lunch at the hospital. Nice wee shot looking up the river there, just as we come around the bend. I think I'm going round the bend myself. I'm usually talking to a, a queen of folk as I go in here, but I'm kind of talking to myself. Now, as we get around here, it's worth noting a few things. For instance, just up in the distance there, right centre of the screen, is uh, Avon Home House. I think it was built about 1812, if I'm right in saying. Georgian House and uh, Famous architect which uh, escapes my mind. I think it's Robert Adam, possibly. I need to check that out who built the house. Uh, Glassford's over the other side. We'll, we'll take a donor there another day. Again, a lovely stretch in the, the river. Just looking back there. Here's me holding this wee camera here, and I should really be looking down because the place is covered in. Sheep cake. Anyway, that'll be one to clean off later. And you'll probably notice here, this is where we're just about getting to the horse pool where we're going to stop. We're just a wee bit further on. But if you actually look from here, this gives you an idea of maybe where the horse pool got its name. Possibly. We'll come to that in a minute. But if you look round, it goes right round in a great big loop there. 
like a horseshoe. Now, that is probably where the origins of it come from. Or maybe not. Because it is said that somewhere along these banks, as the uh, legend goes, there was a, a ford in the river. Possibly somewhere around about here, where a farmer, it is said, tried to cross from the Glassford side to get to Stonehouse in a horse and cart. And uh, he's, uh, it was in his uh, we it's a, a trap, I suppose you would call it. And uh, so while he was trying to cross over, uh, he had his daughter in the, ca the carriage as well. Uh, and they tried to cross over the ford, and as they were coming over the river, here there was a hell of a storm as they were heading over to Stonehouse to get our, the mill home and up the bray. And uh, unfortunately the, the wheel must have went at one side, and here they did not tip the horse, the farmer and his daughter into the river in the heavy storms. It was of, of an evening as well, so it was pretty dark and very scary certainly. Anyway, the, it said that the farmer managed to get his daughter out and dragged her to the side, and they both survived. However, the horse is said to have drowned in the river, or so the legend goes, and that's where a lot of people claim uh, that that's where the origins of the horse pool came from. Now, that kind of passed for, oh, that must have been probably 150 years, 200 years ago that might have happened. Well, lo and behold, in the 1930s, this is us getting to the actual spot of the horse pool. But in the 1930s, there was, uh, there was three or four young boys for a village. I think it was about 1934. And they were swimming in the horse pool here, which I wouldn't recommend because there's some right deep spots, you know. And we'll not begin in the day. Bloody cold. And uh, while they were in there swimming, here, did they know go into a deep pool in the water here? And uh, one of the boys dragged something up. And what it was? It was a horse's head. A horse's head. So, the chances of that not being linked to the story are probably pretty slim. But uh, that is where uh, I suspect maybe the true story of the horse pool lies. Now, also worth mentioning here as well, as we come down to the water's edge, <laughs> very carefully, there's a, a red ochre uh, seam which is just in there. You'll just see it uh, trickling down. Uh, into the water. Well right there, if you come down the winter, there's a whirlpool just over the other side there and if the ice is just thin enough in the top, the whirlpool will actually cut a hole in the ice and it turns a, a whole circle in there. I've seen it a few times, I'll maybe post a photograph and uh, it's quite a sight to see. So you can throw some, or skim some stones onto the, the, the ice, you can actually see them going around in a, uh, a circle there. See here we are, down at the hospital. Now another thing you might not know about down here, uh, if you haven't been down before, uh, if you've been down one of my many walks you'll have heard the stories a million times, uh, but this is a popular bit as well for uh, fossil hunters. Uh, and you'll find all sorts of bits and pieces here along the way. Not the best bit, but there is plenty here, uh, and I quite often leave some stones at the side uh, for folks to kind of find and, uh, them a wee bit easier. But you've got uh, this the kind of period we're talking about here. You're going back to the Carboniferous, right? That's hard enough for me to say, but uh, Carboniferous, aye, aye, that's easier now. Uh, that's about 300 million years ago. That's even older than our Jimmy Anderson in Stonehouse, if you can, we Jimmy. And uh, what you can find here is mostly the likes of shell fossils. Uh, you can get some plant life. Uh, I haven't found any fish here myself, but I have found fern, uh, and you'll find it in uh, the stone here. A lot of the lighter stone is probably the better stuff to, to look for. Now you'll find a few things here. Uh, you'll also find uh, things here. This is a wee iron stone ball, uh, and it almost looks like a marble, but uh, in fact most people, they actually mistake it for a marble, they're so round. Uh, what other things will you get here? You'll also get uh, this is a, an old bottle top, and this is where folk have been picnicking in years gone by. Uh, and I've just discarded them, and they're made of stone, I've got the, the name of the, the maker on there. And these are great wee things to find along the way. But you've also got uh, fossils, as I say. Uh, you've got wee things called crinoids, I'll see if I can find some for you. Uh, I've also got a bit, there's a bit there, a 
don't know if you can see that, if it's focusing well enough, but that's a thing called horsetail. It's got lots of wee lines on it, uh, all symmetrically aligned with each other. And that's like a, a large uh, plant, which uh, again, going back to the Carboniferous, not quite the time of the dinosaurs and the Jurassic, uh, but uh, fascinating all the same. So if you do get a chance to come down here, have a look in the rocks, and you're looking for uh, you're looking for uh, rocks which mostly light in colour, and uh, you'll hopefully find a wee. The, the most easiest thing to find is uh, the the crinoids, which I'm struggling to actually find right now. But you're guaranteed if you do come down here to find some. If I find some, I'll I'll bring them back to you. I'm going to have my lunch in it, and I'll be back. Hi, so there we are, looking at Avon home. All the way up to the, the glacier stones yonder. As I say, uh, some of the, the stones here contain fossils. Uh, quite a few. I've got a number myself, uh, but you'll, you'll find here there are plenty. This is a thing here called Stigmaria. Again, it's like a, a kind of tree fossil. Uh, that's, that's quite common here. Uh, you can find that in large sections. Some of them are actually too large to carry. Uh, but the, the most common thing is probably the wee crinoids, uh, which are wee, they, they lived on the seabed uh, about 300 million years ago, and uh, they're like wee tubes, uh, sometimes you see them as circles on the stone, and other times you uh, see them as the kind of tube, we'll see if we can actually f uh, see what we can find here. Uh, in fact there's a bit of stigma area there, don't know if you can see it, I'll uh, see the just the wee pitted bits on the stone here. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that's quite a nice bit actually. Uh, you've also uh, worth uh, considering when you come down here if you're actually trying to look for fossils. Sometimes it's actually better to look at the water's edge. The reason being that sometimes uh, the stone can actually uh, it, it shines through the, the, the fossils. Uh, but I'm sure I saw a bit here the last time I was. Doing a great, there's a great big bit. Uh, I think I've uh, must be around about here. Nah, I've, I've lost it. Uh, however, oh, there's uh, in fact there's some crinoids here, just in the water edge. And as you can see there, the wee white bits are shining through. So that's a shell fossil. In fact, there's there's a bit there. I don't know if you can see that. That's uh, just a section of the the crinoid. Passing through the rock there, flattened out. Very, very common. In fact, the best way to see it, if you do find a, a good one, I've got one here I found a few years ago. I'm going to put it in the water for you. If you look at it here, this is actually shell fossils. It looks okay there, but uh, if we actually put it into the water, let's see what happens. You can see it, it's coming up a lot sharper now. Look at all those shells in there. Absolutely fantastic. That's a cracker. And it's right through the stone onto the other side. I'm not sure what kind of uh, fossils they are. There, 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 there's so many. Uh, you need an expert to look at them uh, and identify them. In fact, there's uh, a chap comes out here uh, every year for the Hunteria and I think he's actually looking for a... There was once a fossil found in Stonehouse which uh, has never been found anywhere else. It's a thing called a... Diplodosis gabosis or something like that. Uh, don't pull me up my pronunciation, but it was a half shark, half uh, stingray, uh, and it was found in the Watson Burn in Stonehouse. But uh, it was the the teeth of the the the, the shark. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure the the period in which it was found, uh, but uh, it's again further evidence of life here, going back to prehistoric days. There we've got a nice shot up the river, heading back to, uh, well we're just heading up to Hunter Lees very soon there. Uh, if you're very lucky you can come down here and if you look onto the edge of the branches, not that I've seen any today, but the Kingfisher have been here regularly over the last few years, so if you're lucky take a chance to do that. So that's just a few of the fossils you'll find in here, there are many more. And uh, as I say, I've got so many now, I don't bother taking them anymore. But what I do is I try to leave them maybe at the side of the grass or uh, find them for yourself. I think it's more 
uh, fun. Uh, and if the children, uh, once they know what they're looking for, they'll be down here all day finding bits and pieces and filling their pockets full of uh, stones and taking them home, half of which aren't even fossils at all, but uh, no, there's nothing in that. So, aye, come and explore it for yourself. I'll be seeing you soon. Well, that's us just leaving the hospital. In case you're wondering, that's not a UFO landing, that's just uh, when, uh, where the sheep have been feeding. But we're going to leave the hospital now. Had my lunch, done a bit of fishing with a, a magnet there. Found nothing as usual, but uh, if you're lucky enough, uh, there has been a Roman coin found in here, uh, way back, I think around about 1980, uh, and it dated to the uh, 4th century, if I remember rightly, to the Emperor Constantine, uh, and that was uh, about the, the 4th century AD. So, uh, aye, you could be lucky. So now we're going to actually take a wee walk just along the banks of the river here. And uh, as we see the even making its way up towards the home, you can actually look around the field here. Great big vast uh, area there, open space. Not a person in sight, absolutely magic. Don't get me wrong, I love the company of people, but uh, it's sometimes just good to come down here and uh, enjoy the countryside as it is. Uh, and I'll guarantee you you'll feel better for it. If you're lucky as well, got plenty of wildlife down here. The herring are regular. As are uh, the otters have been returning as well. I've got a wee bit of footage of the otters. Uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly where they are because <laughs> uh, I don't like to uh, put too many people to go to the site and it maybe scares them off and they head up to Lack Hall. Maybe taking a chance going up there right enough but uh, Anyway, lovely, lovely setting here. You can walk down fall at the edge of the river, but just watch your footing as you're going along here. Uh, I better watch my footing. Quite interesting, this bank was built up over centuries, and if you're lucky, you can find bits and pieces in at the banks here. I've found wee glass stone jars, uh, wee ink wells that you would get uh, in the schools of the old days. Uh, found them, quite a number intact. A lot of bottle tops as well, uh, and just uh, and these are just been exposed from the side of the bank, and which are built up over years. And again, you'll also find lots of areas there of stone where, if you're lucky enough, you'll be able to find some uh, fossils. Found one or two of the day uh, I hadn't seen before. <laughs> Sounds like I know every step of this, but. Uh, I don't because every year you come down here, the water's continually turning the stones, washing it up the river, and you're finding new things all the time. Just love the sound of the, the water going over the, the stones here. Aye, another scourge of the, these times, unfortunately. Uh, the environment is the amount of dumping that goes on here too. There we've got an old tyre. Uh, just check there's no there's enough thread there I might take it back. <laughs> but uh, nah you'll you'll find all sorts of things down here. Uh, you'll also find a lot of ceramics as well, pots. that have just been dumped over the centuries. In fact here, just as we're walking by here, there's a, a, a wee bit of fossilised stone. It's hard to tell what most of this is, uh, but it is shell, uh, mostly shell fossils that you'll find here. And it's nice just to walk along the bank. See, you could be here for hours just turning the stones. Although it is worth remembering, if you are coming down here yourself, uh, I always like to bring a phone with me, which I forgot the day. <laughs> Uh, just in case you do get into trouble, as there has been one or two people that have had to be uh, rescued down here who've come a, come a cropper. Uh, you'll, it's also uh, another thing that's worth remembering in the winter time is uh, as we walk along the banks here. Although it's quite shallow uh, in parts as we're looking along the river, 
it's worth remembering there's some deep pools on the river and many of these pools have got names to them uh, maybe the names of old fishermen who were known to fish certain sections or maybe they were named after farmers that uh, fish some of these uh, waters themselves uh, and uh, some of the names have been lost to us like Deef Tam's Hole or uh, Washing Green Hole and there's one even up with glass for that's called Target Hole which was used for the Napoleonic troops in fact just as I'm walking here uh, we'll get some footprints here not clear what they are As I say, the, the otter are down here, but you've also got American mink as well. Uh, quite elusive. But uh, I have seen them on a, a number of occasions. Yeah, but just watch that water when it comes to the winter time, because the ice may look secure, but uh, my daughter nearly came a cropper one day, coming down here, and nearly went under. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's bloody cold in the winter. I've done it. Once myself tried to cross the river and uh, it nearly paralyses you uh, and it can you can feel your heart going. So don't don't do it. That's us back up onto the field again. Not a soul in sight. There we go, there's some more. Lichen on the tree there, the yellow lichen. Uh, you can usually get a, a kind of purple dye, believe it or not, out of that. You would think it would automatically, oh, it must be yellow. But some of them actually, because of the, the, the properties in them, they actually change with, uh, when you mix them. I wouldn't recommend you use your own urine as a fixer. Uh, although you, you might, if we get into <laughs> uh, difficult times. I'm just talking pish now. Right, aye, but here we go, coming up to the, the next section. Uh, on the other side of the river, you can walk it from the uh, glass for stones. Uh, not the most uh, easy walk if you walk on the other side of the bank. It's, it's lovely, there's some nice open areas. You'll also find some carvings in the trees as well, which have been carved by people uh, through the decades. Uh, I can't remember the, the, the names, but it was a couple of young lovers I've carved their, their names, I think it was 1948 in one of the trees there. And you'll also get the deer on the other side. Occasionally you'll get them here, but uh, the deer tend to keep to the other side of the river. And if we just look round, just at uh, the top of the brae there, that's where St Ninian's Church is, and we'll take a walk there another day. Worth noting that there's been various landslides there, so do not under any circumstances go up underneath there. Uh, sometimes you can get landslides which expose rocks, but it's just too dangerous and unstable just now. Well, if you've never been, I recommend you get yourself down here. Preferably in the summer, but I tell you, there's, there's no many better places around about here to just enjoy the, the countryside or in your, your own village. And if you're worried about the current situation and what that might be, sometimes when you're down here, it kind of puts life into perspective and what's important to us all. There's a sheep making for the hills. Mint sauce! Ah, deep. This is a lovely wee section here, uh, just leading up to the Hunter Lees. Uh, there is a couple of deep pools in there. As I found myself, I have walked up the river, and the river is probably the easiest way in some ways, but you need to know the river. And as we come round, the birds are whistling away. Uh, this is probably the best section for uh, the fossils. So, we'll take you up there and see what we can find. 
I can guarantee you, if you ever come down here, you will find fossils. If you know what you're looking for, that is. <laughs> This is my favourite section. It's just so quiet. And if we look around the field to the end there, you're looking towards uh, the edge of the home. The home farm, it goes back at least to 1596. Uh, where most people will know it uh, from looking down from the, the park across the water at the Linter Bridge. And that's the end of the field. Quite interesting actually. <laughs> Just looks like a big open field. I uh, can't see over here, but uh, uh, it was uh, once the site of uh, the original site of uh, where Stonehouse Violet used to play. And I have got some photographs from 1909 showing the team with a ball and it's got a year on it. And that's where they first played. It was also the site, however, of the Lanarkshire Rifle Volunteers. Uh, rifle range and that's where they practice their, their rifle shooting. Uh, Stonehouse belonged to the uh, I think originally the 9th uh, Lanarkshire Rifle Volunteers and that's where they, they sh shot there and they were formed about the 18 late mid, mid to early 1860s uh, uh, when they were worried that I think it was Napoleon III, I might be wrong with that, I think it was Napoleon III who the British feared was actually going to invade Britain, so they formed these rifle volunteers throughout the country. They never actually went to war, although uh, some of them did see some action uh, in uh, the Boer War, but I think by the end they'd already uh, formed into the Highland Light Infantry. But Stonehouse had at least uh, uh, 25 to 40 men who were part of that. In fact, just looking at my feet here, we'll get some more and a like in fact you'll see this stuff quite often actually and uh, if you used to have a train set in days going by if you're of a certain age this lichen would come in wee packages and folk would make trees and bushes and all sorts of stuff out of it you get different kinds of lichen there you get a thing called crotro uh, and i think the other stuff's called sea ivy you get four or five different lichens on there by the way i'm the expert your man to see is john douglas <laughs> I think he stays down Murray Drive and he's your man uh, for the lichens. So that's us, we're coming up in the, the stone area. In fact, there's actually, I don't know if you can see them, they'll probably take off here. There's a couple of ducks just in the water there. I'm not sure what kind of ducks they are for this distance. In fact, it might even be a, One of them might be a, Ah, no, I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. That's them. Taking off, they saw me. I can actually hear a woodpecker on the other side of the water as well. You get a greater spotted woodpecker's been quite common again. Uh, and I can hear it in the distance, it's probably, you're not going to pick it up here. You've also got a sighting uh, of a green woodpecker actually up at uh, uh, the Cander uh, a few years back. And that's a rarity. Uh, and to be able to see it, uh, <laughs> you're highly unlikely, they're just so elusive. So here we are, uh, another section of the river, just down for the Hunter Lees, which goes up the, the brae there. I say if you're looking for all stone pots, uh, all bottles, you'll find it just under the undergrowth there. It's just been dumped over the edge some years ago. As we cross over the, the rocks, it's just keeping an eye out. Oh, I don't think I know, that's an all fossilised sock. There, aye. Aye, you'll find all sorts. And if you're very lucky, oh, in fact, here we go. I look onto this rock here. Here we've got a section of a crinoid. And that's just the remains of fossilised shells. And they're throughout this area here. This, you just need to uh, spend a bit of time, and once your eye gets used to looking for these things, you'll, you'll find them everywhere. Uh, other thing uh, worth remembering at this section is uh, that this is also a popular bit with the, the fishers as well. They come down here and they quite often camp by the water here. Right, 
Yeah, just looking up river for signs of otters and mink, occasional deer. I've actually uh, got a, a fossil which is on the rock here. I found this one before. It's a bit of fossilised shell, some kind. Yep, other things I've got here. Uh, I think there's some more, if I can see. Uh, yeah, there's some bits of crinoid there. You can just see the the section. That's you looking down into the crinoid. These stones are covered uh, in shell fossils. Now another important find, uh, I was taking a walk down here some years ago. I was uh, a group uh, for an evening walk and one of the gentlemen who was st standing right next to me uh, bent down and picked up what I thought looked like uh, a stone cigar. Uh, it was the oddest thing, it felt really really light and here it is. Okay. And what you're actually looking at here is probably the earliest evidence that we know of of man and woman having come to Stonehouse area. This is a Neolithic stone pestle and it probably dates to about 6000 BC. So you're talking 8000 years ago. And this was used in conjunction with a thing called a quern stone and uh, I have got some quern stones at home but uh, the gentleman picked it up, wasn't sure what it was, we got it checked out uh, and I actually need to declare, well I have declared this under the treasure trove I'm still waiting to find out what's to happen to it because it's a legal requirement to uh, you don't need to do it with fossils but this has been man-made, this needs to be declared uh, and a museum may ask for it at some time uh, but we're still holding on to it this now uh, and this was used to roll flat beds, flat bread, sorry, uh, on a stone so you would uh, have the, the flour, water uh, and uh, they would make these flat breads as they were travelling. So this is for a kind of hunter-gatherer, just travelling from one place to another. They're usually much bigger than this. This is a very small one which suggests this is somebody who is travelling from place to place uh, and moving through the area. But it was just resting just at the side of the water here completely intact uh, and I believe the stone actually comes even as it may actually come from the, the Mediterranean uh, out towards Turkey way and that just shows you uh, where, where they're trading uh, where they just well the way they tr just traveling across the country where they wore wide uh, where they're traveling throughout the world uh, much further distances than we we realize I don't know but that's the first evidence of man in Stonehouse and it's intact. Uh, I just need to be careful I don't drop it. I can't believe it's uh, still in tight. So, there we go. There's, there's some fossils uh, and a wee bit of history uh, of the early man being here. And we're just walking over the stones as we head towards the turn in the river. I have found uh, old curling stones in here before. I've also found uh, what else we got? Uh, yeah, a couple of quern stones, uh, parts of. It's hard to actually date those because they've been used for hundreds and thousands of years. Uh, yeah, you'll find a lot of more recent stuff down here as well. Old cars that have been dumped, parts of cars. Uh, I've also got a stone, uh, sorry, a, a magnet which uh, you can fish with. Uh, sometimes you can find bits and pieces there too if you're lucky. But, uh, we just look across uh, the river here, just at the other side. If I just come round a bit further, just where those trees are, just over by, uh, it's ha hard to see. But I was walking one day along the, the river bank at the other side, on the home side, and I came across what is a very, very old plough, and it's just embedded into the tree uh, just at the far side there but you can only uh, see it if you're uh, at the other side in fact uh, I'm at the wrong section it's actually just at that tree over there but it's probably just been discarded it's been too old it's never been broken and the farmers just dumped it and replaced it with a new plough this is us coming up to the 
the turn, that's you at the home farm turn there. On another occasion I'll take you along to a place which is not too far from here where you can find wild strawberries, uh, you can also find uh, crab apples for cooking, uh, who knows, we might be needing that uh, in the way things are going, but uh, if you like a bit of foraging there's plenty out here uh, to feast on. Uh, and if you've been one of the, the many walks in the past, uh, there's plenty of plant life here which actually can be eaten or partially eaten parts of it just in your dinner uh, or just the accompanying a salad. That's us just rejoining the end of the field. I'll just take a wee look uh, along the mill home here while we're here. The sun's out. You know, I've done nearly uh, just a full circumference of the, the field here. Yeah, great day. Great walk. And we'll just finish up as we come along the end of the river bank. where I'll be rejoining the, the pathway back up the Bray. And this is where I'm going to leave you at this point. If you are out here, this is quite a nice spot if you're, if you're a teenager and you like uh, outdoors and you want to get out camping. As long as you take your rubbish away with you. Don't discard it or throw it in the water. I don't want to be picking it up further down the, the river. Uh, but Aye, you'll love it, enjoy it. This is a good bit here. If you, I would come camping down here when I was younger. But just round the, the edge here, we, we come to a place called the Swallow Bray. And there's all postcards of the village that show the Swallow Bray. And that's just looking up by there to where the landslip is. And in days gone by, it was a, it's, it's, it's built in sand that area. Personally, I wouldn't build on it. Uh, but it's built in sand and uh, the sand keeps falling and uh, the sand martins and swallows, they would make their nests in the, the fall from the, the landslides and that's how it got its name, Swallow Bray. You can, if you want, uh, go further round the edge. If you're elderly and firm or not confident on your feet, I wouldn't recommend it because you're going to have to kind of do a bit of scrambling over the edge there. It's a, that's a cracking spot as well. There are some fossils around there as well. And uh, we're just seeing, I don't know if you can just see it through the trees there, just in the distance. Now we get the home farm just yonder. And that'll take you at the turn there, just follow it around. That'll take you down to the bogs and then up to the, the winter. But aye, I wouldn't recommend scrambling around unless you're uh, able to. There is a wee burn here. This is the end of the, the man's burn, is it? It's, uh, um, in fact, not a man's burn. It's uh, the man's burn comes down uh, the back of the park. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. That escapes me, but there was actually a mill uh, here at one point as well. In fact, you can see the edge of the bank and where it's been built up, but uh, it's long uh, gone and disappeared now. So, just to say thanks for joining us and uh, hopefully in the, the coming weeks we'll get out again and I'll share some of the places in Stonehouse that some of you might not have been and uh, we'll enjoy a wee bit more at Stonehouse and uh, what there is to see. So thanks for joining me. Bye.